Hello. So I have this super cute and very quick and easy little treat box to show you. And it has some really cute pumpkins on the front. And what's really cool about this is it actually didn't involve any stamping at all. <gasps> I know, gasp, no stamping. But it has a, really, a lot of really cute stuff in it. It is using the Spooky Night Designer Series paper. And I wanted to show you something really cool about this paper. Let me just set this guy over here. So this is one of the patterns in the Spooky Night Designer Series paper pack. And it has all of these really cute pumpkins on it. it has some with the, the jack o lantern fa faces and without jack-o-lantern. There it is. It came out now. And that's the other side. Some cute um, vanilla and black polka dots. But what's really cool was when they designed the, um, the uh, Spooky Night product suite, they also made other things to coordinate with it. So another pr um, product that was designed to go with it is the Pick a Pumpkin and Pattern Pumpkins uh, bundle. The pumpkins on the stamp set and in the coordinating dies are actually the same size and style as the ones on the designer series paper. So even though it's not technically part of the Spooky Night Suite, it coordinates and works with it. So let me show you what I mean. And this is one of the things that I did. Got my dies out with my Big Shot and the pumpkins from the dies match up with the pumpkins on the designer series paper. And this little guy here was making the face I was making after I discovered that. <gasps> what? So you can see there's already three pumpkins that match and there's a fourth one that matches in there too. So these four dies coordinate with the paper in the set, making it very easy to cut out cute, quick projects. Um, I trace all around mine just so I can keep track of where they go on my paper, and I make sure I have them all. So I'm not actually going to sit here and cut them out in front of you right now, because um, you can get the idea here. But with your Big Shot that you can order anytime from my, my um, online store, with the Big Shot you can cut these super quick. A little tip for trimming your paper down to make it fit in your Big Shot is trim around the other pumpkins. First I was just cutting through higgledy piggledy and I didn't care, but then I realized I'm missing out on all of these great pumpkins by doing that. So go ahead, take your paper snips and trim around the extra pumpkins that won't fit on the, the platform and then go from there. Okay, so after I had trimmed out my pumpkins, this is what I had, these three here. And this was actually one of the projects we made at one of my team meetings. Every month at my team meeting, we make four, uh, four projects, and this was one of them. And there's three other Halloween treats, which I'm sure you'll find those videos on here if you look a little further down. All right, so after we had our pumpkins cut, we had our cardstock, which is eight and a half, whoops, come back here, <laughs> eight and a half by four. And then I scored it at... I'll turn it this way so my, my scoring lines make sense. I got my, my score tool and I scored it at 2 inches, 4 inches, 6 inches, and 8 inches. I'll go ahead and get my Simply Score tool out just so you can see what I'm talking about here. And so it makes lots of sense. So this is the Simply Score tool. Then it has the grid starting at 0 going across all the way, all the way to 12.5. And the same on the other side here. So we're going to line it up in the corner, get our stylus, and I like to use the larger end compared to the smaller end. So at the two inch mark here, score down, go over two more inches to the four inch mark, over two more to the six inch mark, and over two more again to the eight inch mark. And once that was done, we had our grid all the way across. Then you turn it, you rotate it one, one time and score all the way down at the two inch mark. And that gives us the framework and the base for our box. I'm gonna slide this out of the way so we can finish making our box here. I like to call this box a two, four, six, eight box. It helps you remember your scoring dimensions and it makes it very, very easy to make. Okay, so now that we have that done, we're gonna cut along our score lines from the bottom just to the cross score line, so where it goes across the page, all the way up on all of our vertical score marks, 
It might not be completely perfect, but that's okay. And with this last one, this is like our tab for the back. So we're going to cut up in that last little bit here at the bottom on our, our cross um, score mark. We're going to cut it there just to get rid of that bottom bit. So that's what we have here. So now we'll fold it. And I like having my bone folder handy for this. You give it some nice sharp creases. And the last one here for the tab. And then you can fold the whole thing this way. There. So now that we have gone across all of our creases for our folds, we're going to fold this last section in like this so that our tab's right here in the middle. You can use some fast fuse or tear and tape right along the edge there. And then you're going to bring this flap in so that it lines up with your fold. And that makes, makes it very easy to fold your box and get it all lined up. See? And there it is. Ta-da! Now we're going to do the bottom flap. So I like to identify what's going to be the front of my box. For me, the flap and the little extra tab always goes in the back. So this will now be my front. So with my front right there, I'm gonna fold in my two sides, my bottom, and then this is my front flap. This is where I'm gonna put my adhesive, here along the very end, and then toward the inside of it. There. And now push it closed. This, and there's the front of my box. I have some more of our Spooky Night Designer Series paper. One inch wide, and see that cute all over pattern on the back? Cute. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit on the end and start wrapping it around my box. Find where the back is, here's my tab, so there's the back. And you're just going to kind of line it up in the middle. You can also, if you want, and put that along the front as long as your embellishments on the front are wide enough to cover it. And once you have it wrapped around, you're going to put a little bit more adhesive along the bottom, or along the end there, and stick it down, wrapping up, lining up your ends. And there it is. And then you just kind of squeeze along the corners to, cre to crease it, like that. All right, there's the box there. We use some of our dimensionals and our adhesive to put our pumpkins on. So the ones in the back I put on flat a little bit of adhesive there, kind of bring them up high and set them down a little lower. And then this little guy here can go on a dimensional. Oops, there it goes. Take a three by six gusseted cellophane bag and some really cute pumpkin pie stitched ribbon. Put some candy corn inside, tie a bow, and then it fits. You might have to squeeze the sides in a little, and it fits right into your tree pouch, ready to give away to some cute little person in your life. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, for checking out this little treat box, and I hope you make some too. Be sure to stop by my blog for the full printout of, um, or for the full instructions, so that you can see what all was needed in case there was a step that you missed along the way. Um, and you can subscribe to the channel too so that you can catch all the videos as they come out. Again, thanks for stopping by. Have a great time stamping and I'll talk to you later. Happy stamping!